Uh, my name is Jim Ward. I'm a musician, and this is what's in my bag. I mean, my favorite thing to do is come here with other, other musicians and bandmates and friends, because then it's like going back to, you know, when you're in high school and all you did was sit around and talk about records. We would just send out for uh, records from Discord or whatever, and when they would come, you know, you'd all go to somebody's house, and, you know, I miss that. So being here, it kind of gives you that, that same sort of feeling. This is uh, Miles Davis' Sketches of Spain. You know, this record, some people said it wasn't jazz. They said it was, uh, I think they were trying to sort of take a shot at him. And his quote was, I, I like it. <laughs> That's it. Next, this is McCartney 2, which I think was a solo second record. My generation growing up, um, John Lennon was kind of the Beatle that, that you looked up to as a songwriter or whatever. In the last maybe like two years, I've just been getting way, way more into Paul McCartney. Next one is Van Morrison, Astro Weeks. It's like his uh, genre defined album, where it wasn't folk and it wasn't, you know, he wasn't what the label wanted him to be necessarily. And I have this like real fascination with people that sort of step out of their genres or, or what they're known for or what they're supposed to be famous for or what's supposed to sell. That wasn't commercially successful, and now it's known as a, as, a, as a solid record, you know? Same thing with the Beach Boys, Smiley Smile. Again, it's the one that, it wasn't commercially successful. It was like the beginning of the end of sort of Brian Wilson being together. It's after Pet Sounds, and it was sort of his downward spiral of like, whatever. I mean, the guy's a genius, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> He did Smile later on with that like 2003, right? Like he sort of finished Smile. It got shelved and they ended up making Smiley Smile instead. And the only song I think that really was a hit was Good Vibrations. Apparently he, he took like three hours of music and cut it down to three minutes. Like literally cutting tape. The other one, Kurt Vile. This really just bought this because last night somebody told me that if I don't own that record that I needed to. I think when you when you hear, especially when you come to LA and you're dealing with like music industry people and they say you have to get this record, we all go through so many records and fads and whatever and we're so inundated by albums and press releases that when someone sits down and says like, you've got to get this record, that means that it cut directly through all of that stuff. And to me, I take that seriously. I was looking for a Marty Robbins record, I couldn't find it. I have this weird love-hate thing with Marty Robbins because he wrote El Paso, which is where I'm from, and he's not from El Paso. And so, like, everywhere you go in the world, they're like, yeah, you know, Rosa's Cantina, which is, you know, two minutes from my house, and, you know, fell in love with a Mexican girl, and I'm like, I wasn't even from there, you know? One night a while, young cowboy came in, wild as the West Texas way. But now I sort of have this new sort of found respect for him, like just as a, as a country songwriter or whatever. And I'm kind of getting past like the, the he wrote El Paso. So Graham Parsons, which is the lost recordings. I had no idea it existed. I just walked by it when I was looking for Marty Robbins. And... Same thing will happen again, cause that's the bad guy. The genre mashup is so fascinating to me. And in my career, like I, I get sort of bored with one thing and go on to the next. So now I'm on this like sort of acoustic solo country vibe trip. And he was like, he's sort of a, a, the map maker when it comes to that. And didn't really, again, didn't care about sort of making a career out of one thing and following it. Like he would just kind of go from one thing to the next. And I mean, Van Morrison was playing like in, in little 
cafes and stuff in Boston because nobody in New York would book him when he, before he made that record because he pissed off a label. And there was like reprisals if you book Van Morrison, you know? And he still just went and made a record that he wanted to make and it's sort of, you know, when like Elvis Costello is saying it's like one of the best records ever made, then I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> you know, that's it. I remember going to the Amoeba in San Francisco and trying to sell our like first seven inch and at the drive-in and then going back years later and seeing it like behind glass. To me, that's like a big moment in your career or whatever, your did life. Did we take it that first time? I think you guys did. Okay, good. Amoeba. Nom, nom,